Broadcasting from Baltimore, Maryland, this is 5 by 3 Radio, where strength is for everyone. I'm your host, Emily Sokolinski, owner of 5 by 3 Training, a strength and conditioning gym in Baltimore, along with my co-host, Rebecca Fishburne, founder of Cornerstone Strength Maryland. Each week, Rebecca and I will discuss the ins and outs of strength training, why there is a no one-size-fits-all approach, and why strength is so important in our daily lives. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now, on with the show. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to 5x3 Radio. Um, this week um, on the podcast, we actually don't have Rebecca. It's just me. Um, I recently had a phone call with a friend of mine who lives in um, Leicester, England, and her name is Lynette. She's a GP, um, and we met um, God, probably about six years ago. I'm trying to remember if it was 2016 or 2017 we met um, when I was working for, started working for Starting Strength Online Coaching before it became Barbell Logic. And I started working for um, Starting Strength Online Coaching and met Lynette that way. Uh, she was one of my clients and we hit it off immediately. She was fantastic to coach. Um, we became fast friends as well as, um, you know, coach and trainee um, relationship. And when I, after a year, I decided to, to stop um, coaching online via Starting Strength Online Coaching. But Lynette and I stayed in touch and... Um, I, um, I, I was coaching her, you know, after, after I finished working with them and she actually came and visited Baltimore for her 40th -40th birthday and, um, uh, did one of our camps and got some in-person coaching and, you know, we hung out at dinner together. It was fantastic. So she and I have been in touch since then off and on over the years, I did some coaching with her and then she'd stop. But over that time, she became very, very invested with uh, coaching herself, wanting to wanting to coach others, wanting to instruct others in the barbell lifts, and has been pursuing this extensively. She's working with her daughter. She'd worked with some of her friends. And recently, she finally was able to um, get in touch with a woman who wanted to have uh, someone come in and in, into this uh, studio and, and work with uh, individuals in this capacity and we're talking actually older lifters kind of in a rehab setting but rehab setting with um squatting and pressing then squatting pressing and deadlifting primarily so she's been working on this for a long long time really trying to get more um more of herself out there to to coach and work with people as a gp but also as a as a uh, a strength coach and She's been in touch with our friend Mac, who had a gym in Scotland, who um, we both value his, you know, his uh, his opinion and matters because it's very different over there than it is here in the United States as far as kind of getting certified and being able to work with individuals. So he's been helping her traumatic, uh, tremendously kind of working through all that. But she contacted me. She wanted to run a few things by me as she's been working with this group of individuals once a week. And she had questions as a kind of where to go from here now, you know, giving a background of what she's been doing, but what are some other um, options that she can give them? Where does she, where does she progress them to? Some of them really want to work with more of the barbell training others. She's not so sure of. So we sat down and had a talk and I recorded it. I thought it'd make a good podcast for you to hear of um, a doctor, a GP who is investing her time in strength training and is very devoted to this and has been working with a group of older, I'd say master lifters. Um, and it just was a fascinating talk to, to be able to kind of like work some things out with her and offer some advice to her about what to do. And we talked about training older individuals and the rewarding, um, uh, how, re how rewarding it is to work with, um, you know, 65, 70 plus um, strength trainees. So I hope you enjoy the podcast. Um, this is Lynette and I just kind of hanging out on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> chit-chatting over Zoom. And um, it's uh, it should be pretty um, pretty interesting. It was very it was very enjoyable to listen to, to talk to her and catch up with her, but also um, provide her with some uh, thoughts as to where to go with her her programming and her classes. So on with the podcast. Hi. Hey. Ooh. Oh, I love the hair. Oh, you haven't seen this. Yes, this has been a few no. months. But of course, it, you won't. Let me just put my phone on. Do not disturb. Um, yeah, you won't have seen this. This is. I love it. It's good, isn't it? I know. It's, it's fantastic. It's hard to come back from. I had the stripe and then it got a bit more and a bit more. And it's addictive, isn't it? I'm told tattoos have the same effect, but I've never gone. I love it. I love it. 
It looks fantastic. Yeah, no, I'm pleased with it. I must say it's it's very, very good. good. I've been blonde once before, but it was a very, very long time ago. So yeah. I love it. I love it. How are you? I'm good. Good stuff. I'm good. I've actually I've actually made notes because I really, <laughs> really needed to kind of pick your brains about this so far and where I could take it and the stuff that has surprised me and stuff. And I thought yeah. I'm gonna kind of come off the call and think. Ah, I didn't um I didn't ask you for stuff. So um No, that's awesome. And that and I thank you for uh letting me record this so that we can I can share this on the on the podcast because I was thinking I was talking to Diego. I said I'm talking to Lynette on Sunday. She's been, you know, she's been training and she's been she's been coaching people and she's got questions. He goes, that make a great podcast. I said, that would make a great podcast. And I was actually thinking that when I, when I thought of it, because it's, it's like a, it's a social call, but at the same time, they're, you know, sure. they're, 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 there's, there's questions involving, you know, what you're, what we're, you know, we've been kind of talking about over the past couple of years with you. Yeah. So and, and equally, I thought, if, if actually you think it needs to be redone to make it more podcastable, then that's fine too. Um, what, whatever you think anyway, because it doesn't matter. I, I think we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see where it goes mm. and then I can always make edits, mm. but I figure, I think what I want to do is I want to do like a, I'll do an intro on my own just mm. to say, talk to a friend of mine. Mm. This is what she's been doing. This is kind of her background. And then, you know, just kind of go into this and see what, you know, see where it goes, sure. because, you know, it's just, it's interesting. It'll be good to have your take on, uh, on coaching and working with people and, you know, trying to answer questions that you have and that, mm. you know, who knows people who are listening to it might have the same, mm. some of the same questions or just people who are interested, who are doing this, who are just interested in how we coach and how we kind of work out problems mm. and, mm. you know, and that it's, it's, you know, it, it really is kind of experimenting at times. It's, it's, <laughs> we don't been, have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. It's been an enormous experiment. Um, and it's interesting. And as I was kind of thinking, how would I even begin to explain to you <laughs> what's gone well, what's been a challenge? Because it's been yeah. entirely new, but there was a point where I would just have to get in and do it and, and, and very much felt okay Great. with getting on and doing it. Um, uh, I can't remember. I don't think I'd started it at all, had I, when we spoke last time? No, okay. no. So the setting, it's important to understand the setting of, of where this is. This is a studio in a neighboring county, which is very small, small to its smallest county in, in, the, in the country, that's quite affluent and has above average um, kind of health stats, so to speak. Sure. Um, but it's got it's very rural in part. So the, the, there's people that actually are quite isolated. And, and so it's quite interesting from a from a health point of view. And the, the, the owner of the studio, it was her barn wasn't doing anything and as a retirement project she had a former kind of corporate career and mm -hmm. as a retirement project wanted to make use of it she's always been I a remember this. coach right yeah. right so she's coached triathletes she's been a triathlete she's coached tennis various different things and I think her passion was really just to give a, a, a space for people to be more active um, and she runs it as what's called a social enterprise probably I think a, a non-profit would be the equivalent of, of what you've got there mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so she can she can deliver a service very cheaply but the overall goal is to get people in and get them doing something. exactly so right. it currently runs lots of circuit classes they do a seated class for really frail people um they've got an outdoor kind of they call it a rainbow trail and it, again it's like a circuit class um and it's mostly for people who are older or have usually had some sort of ailment and it's kind of ended up that way it wasn't really that by design the people who wouldn't join a gym or wouldn't normally think of themselves as being sporty mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and Mary who owns it is a very experienced sports coach but she's, she's no medical qualifications but she's got that very coachy come on you can do this no nonsense sort of approach right, which I love right. um, and I think that in itself inspires quite a few people so a friend of mine put us in touch I gave her an outline of what I want to do and she was very interested and the initial plan was okay let's put on a strength class and just see what appetite there is so we haven't yeah. advertised we just yeah. opened it up to everybody that was coming through the door anyway um and we were pretty overwhelmed by the interest in people who went yeah I need to do something strength wise that's to awesome the, to the point that I was then going yeah, oh, I've got to deliver. <laughs> I've actually had to do this now. I, do this now. I can't keep making up excuses. I'm still making excuses in some areas, but not with right, me. right. Which we may have talked out initially how it might it, it might mm -hmm. set out, but we went mm -hmm. for a press station 
and the bars are very light they start as yeah. an empty bar to, to show the movement pattern and they go up to about kind of 10 kilos and we've had to cobble together some a little bit heavier than that we've got a squat station which is goblet squat there's no there's no back squatting taking yeah. place um with a straightforward chair for some people because that's the height that they need it and mm-hmm. then you know the old step reebok steps the mm-hmm. of things that you can hire and load yep. we've got one of those um at, which is set probably at about the right height and then we've got a deadlift station which um we bought a couple of probably not calibrated bars and I take some plates in with me every yeah, week yeah yeah and Mary said well it needs to be probably about 12 or 14 people to make it viable because she really doesn't charge them very much um yep that on day one blew my mind a little bit and I immediately thought okay I'm up to 14 people <laughs> I haven't done this before yeah so there was lots of me talking about the the logic behind this we yeah. are training movement patterns. We're not training yes. individual movement movement muscle groups. Yes. And they're really on board with that. And I use the analogies that we've talked about. You want to be able to get off the toilet without an, another pair of hands helping you. You're going to want to put something away, be mm-hmm. it a luggage in an overhead locker or a cupboard at home. And you're probably going to want to pick something off the floor. So what, we, what we're training is these three movement patterns. And everybody was on board with it um, and saw saw the sense in it. So we we got going with the first week, honestly, it was an hour. It, it and it was me demonstrating the moves and trying to keep the cues short and useful and say, uh-huh. yep, this is how you're gonna put your feet, takes the stress out of the knees, particularly for the squat. The squat's been the, uh-huh. the interesting one. They all hate it, but they go reluctantly over to it with their heads <laughs> hanging and go, I, I know I have to do this. But it's, it's the one stage where you just hear, oh. <laughs> oh god i hate this and sometimes i'll catch some of the men sitting down um but so i so i couldn't overload them with cues but i just had to kind of demonstrate it and get them going and then somehow spread myself around all three yeah. stations in the first session to, to try and yeah. show people what they were doing and, and i had very very low expectations that that anybody would make any progress and everybody's been really really conservative i think i felt like I've got to keep everybody's weight really light because the last thing I can have is somebody tweaking something. Um, mm-hmm. And so from that point of view, it's all been very, very light and very conservative and very much an introduction to this. Sure. So nobody's been hurt, which is great. And we've run it. We've run this three times. So Mary knows them all. So for the p- first group, she put the kind of premier ones. These these will be OK. Mm-hmm. These have all had some sort of sporting interest. Mm-hmm. So that that was quite straightforward. The second group actually were really quite similar. She said, I've saved the wobbliest ones for the third group and I've got them for week six this week coming to an end. She wasn't kidding. <laughs> On week one, I was a bit like, <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> There's right. quite a lot of scoliotic spines and, yeah. you know, a, a yeah. Captain yeah. Parkinson's who's blown me away actually with what he's been able to do. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, I suppose in overall, it, the feedback from them has been magnificent. There's only been one lady who quite a nervous lady who after a couple of weeks said, Oh, I don't think this is for me. I'm very worried about hurting my shoulder. And, and, yeah. and I didn't take yeah. it personally at all. No, um, no, you can't. Th- those who knew her said, yeah, of all the people I probably would have perhaps suspected she might not take to it. But other than that, they've all loved it in one session a week. Of course. So they all, I, I kept drilling home that this isn't strength. The first challenge was they're all used to doing circuits and yeah. slowing them down was really difficult. Sure drilling into them you've got to have a rest in between and this is why you have to have a rest mm-hmm. okay um that takes a good four to six weeks to sink in i would say they, they don't know what to do in between and so we ended up putting out little grippy things to, to occupy people <laughs> yeah yeah they, they speed off to the next station and we're like no hang on hang on this group yeah. aren't finished so managing a group of people is quite it's quite challenging i'm, I'm mm-hmm. quite kind of exhausted after the hour um I would have liked to have spent a lot more time with the squatters because I can see that stiff knees, lots of people just bending forward, thinking they're going, they're going to depth. And I have to keep jogging over and going, you're just bending over, get your hips down and use Mm -hmm. this box, wait until you feel it and then touch and go. And Mm -hmm. and I've been Mm -hmm. quite surprised. I've had to repeat that several, for for several weeks in a row. Some people get it straight away, as I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. And other people really aren't that in tune with what their bodies feel like when they're moving. Um, 
But within that same first group, there was others who were up to the heaviest kettlebell that we had by week six. And I was thinking, actually, you would transition quite easily to a back squat, but yeah. that needs yeah. a little bit of coaching. And we don't have of a rack. Course. Um, right. And hence why, you know, we're kind of at that point now of what do we make this look like for phase two? Right. Um, so some of the squatters have made a lot less progress because each week they come back and they feel stiff. Um, the press has been surprisingly good. I expected much more shoulder restriction uh, to, to prevent that. And actually, they've, they've really done OK. And I keep That's explaining great. that actually, yes, you'll probably have one arm stronger than the other. But you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the good arm mm-hmm. brings the, the weaker one mm-hmm. along and mm-hmm. it catches mm-hmm. up. And I heard you and Rebecca talking about that, actually, and amongst yep. all of this. And so I you know, squeezed that in. <laughs> they've all loved the deadlift apart from a couple in in the last group which is which probably doesn't surprise you um because on week one they come in and they look at it i mean it's only got five kilo bumper plates on but, but they don't want to pick it they up look at it and go oh They're, yeah exactly and then when you show them that they can do it they love it mm-hmm. um and as they get more familiar with it, my time gets taken up with changing all the blinking plates over for them. And I'm thinking, this isn't coaching. I'm just juggling plates here because no one's written down what they did. I say to them, right. write it down. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. And you see them wander off and start chatting and nothing's been written down. And I think next yeah. week you're going yeah. to yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, so that's been really interesting. So um, there's been a little bit of, of, of competition, particularly among the men. Um, I've had to really pull that back a little bit and say, stop it stop egging each other on especially with the press because that's not the weight that she needs to handle and there's a husband and wife who've been a little bit competitive Uh I didn't expect that (laughs) how old are they they are um early 70s that's awesome my (laughs) eldest couple are both two retired teachers and they're in their um they're in their 80s like late that's fantastic that's fantastic um really easy to work with really keen to get going great so the feedback has been unanimously positive yeah everybody feels like they've made progress and a bit of me feels like I can see that you have made progress and I can't decide whether they really have made progress or I just was so conservative with how I allowed them to start off that they might have been able to do a little bit more but I I have to be mindful of how much I can manage yeah group of 14 there's not 14 every week some drop off get colds and that kind of thing sure sure um but the most has been this 14 and and that's that's challenging to feel like you want to watch everybody um so what we've ended up doing because towards the end of the six weeks the first group were going well what happens now we we don't want to stop doing it I'm going okay um let's just get the second group going so that we've seen what appetite there is and what numbers we've got of people wanting to carry it on and of course right loads right um so we put a second class on so I now have two classes back to back the more experienced group who I don't have to do as much with yeah um and then my third group, as I say, who are just finishing the, this week and the, uh, the wobbliest. Um, uh-huh. And even some of them want to carry it on as well. But as I've said to Mary, we're reaching the point with some of the some of the chaps as well, where actually the, we're either going to need more equipment or we're going to yeah. need a rack. And she's on board yeah. with that. But it Great. isn't going to work as a clap. This doesn't scale very well. And I've, I've, I've heard Rip say that before. And I'm now going, yeah. I've had to kind of separate them out. So the last couple of weeks I've said, for those of you in the deadlift, can you make sure you're in a, a you know, a, a three or a four with people in the similar weight range to you? So yes. that I'm not taking plates here, there and everywhere. Yes. That, yes. That's helped a little bit. Um, but holding people back, there's an element of them sometimes wanting to rush and get through it. And as it gets a bit heavier, I feel a bit twitchy about, OK, oh, I could do with being here. But equally, I can see that that person's still doing the same squat to what they were doing three, two weeks ago. And mm-hmm. um, and I just feel like they're, they're still loving it. They're still very happy mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. bit of me wants them to really get the most out of it. And so it's 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 coming up to the time of going, well, OK, what does the next phase look like? And 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 how can we make that make that work? And, and um, right. because I'm OK with I, I would like thinking about this this last few days it'd be nice to have the class to keep running to keep those that are still suitable for a class and then maybe mm-hmm. you wouldn't would, would look take one look at a rack and run out the door um maybe when it's been there for a while <laughs> they might get used mm-hmm. to it and it might not look so intimidating mm-hmm. um but there is definitely some and and so I'm look thinking of different models of how it would work so Mary has said to me she's happy for me to have a corner of the studio we're thinking at how we can move stuff and and put a rack in she wants me to cost out 
what I would need, which is I've kind of made a list of that. I was going to run through it with you to think, see if you think I've forgotten anything. Okay. Um, how I might work that. I mean, I was looking at Solly's website and he has people in groups of three. Yes. Two sessions a week. Um, and then that brings in things. Well, what if somebody's off and do you offer that slot? And then what if people don't move on and I end up just coaching perhaps the same six or, or nine people right for six months so so I've got I've, I have got quite a lot of questions about that but maybe again sometimes I've just got to get on with it and, and see what problems are right. okay so um before you get to your questions I have mm. so I have some questions about just how you so you've organized it in three stations yeah um how many people at each station do you have right now no more than four Okay, so you have four yeah. people each station now. So you have four people who are who are squatting, four people who are pressing, four yeah. people who are deadlifting, and yeah. then they rotate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And how long does each? How long is are people pretty much typically at each station? About fifteen minutes, I've noticed. They've had enough. You give them fifteen minutes. They do okay. far too many warm ups. I keep saying yeah. every single week, yeah. do your warm up set, and then you do a few reps until you get to where you want to start to push it, and. Honestly, it doesn't seem to go in. I still see them chatting and pressing away um, and doing loads and loads of, of, of sets of five. Of course. <laughs> I can't control all of that. And, and what it no, has I mean, it's, it's made me let go of any perfectionism because I've realized yes. that actually I've just got to do this and I've got to let go of perfect form, perfect programming and actually keep them going. And, and I think if because if you have, if you've, if you've been very conservative with the weight, I wouldn't worry so much about them doing so many reps yeah. because that the weight's not heavy, right? They're, they're not lifting that much weight. So in a sense, extra repetition, extra reps is the, is the way to go, mm-hmm. right? You can either add, you can progress as you can either add weight, you can add sets, you can add reps mm. in a sense. They're, they're practicing, mm. they're practicing the movement. So allowing them to just do the, do the repetitions mm. um, and do they rotate like, with the press are they just kind of rotating through uh the the one the one piece of equipment or yeah. are there multiple there no, are, no, there's, so several, there's several bars there's several um, bars yeah. okay and, then, and of the heavier ones that we've made up some are having a go with it but there's no racks and and some of them are up to about probably 15 kilos so how are they picking so where are they picking it up from well, we put the them floor? on a chair but then they okay. start off on the chair and they end up all over the place so to be honest yeah <laughs> again I can't control it I've just had to let it go um, but they're okay with that. And it's mostly the the men who who are quite comfortable. I mean, they can they can press easily. Yeah. So I think eventually, you know, it, it, as once you you once you start to acquire more equipment mm. and you maybe have a couple squat stands, because yeah. all you need is a squat stand. You don't necessarily need a rack for that. For that yeah. You just need you just need you just need a couple squat stands. Yeah. Maybe it's two squat stands, and then you have two people on one, on, you know, on one rack, two people, on another rack, mm-hmm. and they're the ones who are pressing the same amount of weight kind of yeah. thing. Like you said, like, you know, so that's something to kind of think about in the future for, for as far as, as the weight gets heavier, you're mm-hmm. not going to want to pick it up from the, from the chair. Um, and as you're saying with the deadlift, same thing with the deadlift, you want to have max people up mm-hmm. who are, who are, yeah. who are lifting the same amount of weight. So you're not changing plates around. Yeah. Um, so you just rotate from, you rotate from, yeah. From yeah. section to section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and so and I'm not completely alone, by the way. There is um one okay. of one of her trainers, Joe, who manages the classes and she knows gotcha. everybody very well. And she'll know okay. if somebody's, you know, had a valve replacement or somebody is right. waiting for a new hit. She she holds all that in her head. I'm struggling right. with everybody's names. So I'm not completely on my own. And so that's I would I would really struggle if if she wasn't there. And, yeah. and Mary kind of floats in and out, but is, is sometimes got somebody, she's got a little pool at the back that she coaches in. So yeah. sometimes there's yeah. even a third pair of eyes that will come in. Um, so, so yeah, so they, 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 they move around and it, to be honest, yeah, you can see that they've had enough by 15 minutes um, sure. and, and they're ready to move on. And then what tends yeah. to happen is at the very end in that spare bit of time is somebody will float back and just do a couple of heavy deadlifts because they they want to just try and go a little bit more a little bit yeah, more. yeah. once they know what they're doing actually I've encouraged that and said actually you know if you, if you want to come back you're warm yeah you know, you've yeah. been 45 minutes if you want to throw a couple of extra plates on yes I'll watch you and, and that's fine and okay and it's the same people who do that the people in each group um do you, are you is this once a week for the same people every single or do you have multiple classes and, and you have different people each each day who come back on like specific days or is it just once? a Wednesday afternoon at the moment Wednesday afternoon yeah okay and, and so um it's the same the, the 
first group and then the second group and then the third group but now our okay. second class who've done a six week introduction are back and there's a there's a cohort of people who want to restart okay. again who are now familiar with it um but it's within that there's definitely you know the goblet squat is reaching a point where it's just it, it, well yes you could keep adding reps I guess but but there's a there's certainly a handful of people who'd be very capable of of, of training it with a bar on their back and yeah um, and I think would want to do it and and then the issue with the deadlift you know it's not it's not heavy by anything you or I would call mm-hmm. heavy um mm-hmm. but it, there are some some of the guys who I think yeah I'd be quite comfortable just you know giving you a bit more of a challenge and I'd really like to see you know how they respond to that um, right. But just watching those that tend to kind of egg each other on a little bit. I mean, I haven't seen there's been nothing that's made me be remotely concerned from an mm-hmm. injury or a safety point mm-hmm. of view at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, if anything, when I, when they say to me, oh, I can really tell the difference in my everyday life, my brain immediately goes, imagine what we could do with two sessions a week or a little bit more personal coaching. Yeah. And, and yeah. that bit yeah. of wants to kind of take it to the next level. I think it sounds like you it sounds like there are people who are ready to, to do that and it's almost like you need you need another day yeah with those people so you need to have like a day with your group mm. who are doing who are still those who just want to stick with like the goblet squats mm-hmm. stick with what they're doing they don't they're not they don't have any interest in in adding weight mm-hmm. they're happy to just keep doing the same yeah. thing and honestly that's okay mm. You know, they're doing something yeah. and they're, and eventually it's going to get easier. And then they're going to say something like, okay, this feels really easy now, now what, but you have to kind of let them yeah. decide that on their own. Um, so it sounds like, yeah, you can't really do a barbell program with two or three people and the rest of the people are still doing yeah. the circuits. That's going to be hard for you to put yourself in two different places. It's yeah. like, you need to, you need to separate yourself from mm. this hour is with this group. And then if you want to do more, I then take two people, two or three people and they squat and they press and they deadlift, like, yeah, yeah. Like actually starting kind of a program with them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I suspect, I don't know if you know much about how, how Solly actually runs a session. I don't, I, I just envisage that he's, if he's got people in groups of three, he's probably got somebody resting and then somebody squatting and maybe somebody deadlifting. Cause that in my mind, I could see that working in the in the you could he's got multiple racks yeah. so that's exactly it i mean it's like the same thing with like the franchise gyms i mean mm-hmm. they have six how many racks i don't know how many how many stations they have but if they've got four people each one person has a rack everybody has their own rack mm-hmm. and they're doing and they have their program mm-hmm. and he's coordinating you yeah. know all of their all you know he's going through what they're doing someone is working on their squats someone's up to their deadlift now you mm-hmm. know and everybody's has their own program and they're there training together. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a small group session. My, my sessions, I might, I don't necessarily run small group sessions. It's an, it's an open mm-hmm. gym, but everybody who comes in knows what the program is. And I'm going around mm-hmm. the room, making sure people need assistance and yeah. help. Yeah. You know, that's it's, and I might have, I might have 15, I might have, you know, 10 people one day. Mm. Um, I might have five people. I might have three people. It's, you know, it varies from like mm. hour to hour mm. during, the, during the times that I'm, I'm open. So, um, so, but you need multiple, you need multiple spaces for, for yeah. that, unless, unless you have people who are just learning and they can practice on that same, yeah. that same rack. Yeah. Right. I mean, we do that at the camps. I mean, at the camps, we, at, we're lucky that we have enough space and we can put everybody on a rack, but in the past, people shared. Yeah. Right. So we didn't have enough of that. So people would, I would pair people up yeah. who would do, who were doing the same, pretty much the same weights. And so and you saw that when we, when you came to, uh, mm. to, you know, to the our camp. camp. Yeah. Right. So we yeah. had to, so, and we, and the space I have now, I can put people on each in individual racks. Mm. Um, but it is kind of tricky to have to kind of, you know, you want to give everybody the attention that they deserve. It, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's a, it's, it's a, it's a give and take. So it's, um, I think you'd have to, you just need to, you need to have a completely separate mm. session for that. Yeah. And, and, and so that's, that's kind of what I'm forming in my mind is this idea that if given, we know that there's an appetite for it. And even within those that are more conservative, there's still room. I don't know what people would pay. Um, mm-hmm. and that is less of a concern for me 
at the minute while I'm going in and doing a couple of classes on the same afternoon. Right. But if I'm going to give it another couple of days a yes. week, then that's that I can't get, use that time to earn elsewhere. And so this is this is the next bit of that's a little bit of a challenge. And I guess I need to speak to them about. But but the mm-hmm. first thing is, OK, how how might this look for me to make it worthwhile if the most I can set up is is a rack and a platform space? Um, then yeah, it need to be working with people in twos or threes, but I think that could work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that could work for two sessions a week. So my thinking mm-hmm. if I could be there for, for two, two days to, to be able to have that cohort of people for two days and they could make good progress. There's never going to be in that setting, a situation like yours, where there's an open gym because, because it, it, that isn't, there's too much other stuff going on. In that no, setting. no. So people, so therefore my offer to people will need to bear that in mind in that how do I use this for 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 the most good do you see right. what I mean and this is where I my, my friend was saying to me I think you're underselling the the space that you occupy knowing the strength training and being a doctor and actually I think people mm-hmm. for a one-off consultation mm-hmm. would be mm-hmm. willing to pay for that and you don't necessarily yes. have to offer the ongoing coaching and programming and all of that. yes um, yes and I thought okay yeah that's true I, I think that might work I don't I don't know who does that maybe that's a maybe that's what barbell meds do I don't know um Mary has athletes that she said actually you know I've got athletes that I think would would want to come to you for some strength training um, mm-hmm. but I guess it's making that offer on the grounds that I can't do all of your training with you like a personal right. trainer would because we right. I wouldn't get anybody else in right maybe that's what it has to look like to to suit the space that we've got that's something I'm thinking of in, in the last couple of days um but maybe there could be slots for small groups of people. So, you know, a couple of hours, you could get three people and then another three, you know, and that would help give me the hands on coaching people mm-hmm. through the, the linear pro- mm-hmm. progression, you know, if, of sorts to build my confidence in that a little bit. Yes. Because I've yes. realized that I don't need to be perfect and able to do this and for people to get benefit. I think that's probably my biggest learning experience from from running this class three three times is that oh actually yes. I do know this well enough and yes. um I don't need to be as perfect as I thought I needed to be to be able to get going with all of this no you the the more it, it just comes from the more you do it yeah the more the more people you have the more people you get to work with and then those who really want to do more they're going to gravitate towards you. And mm. then you can say, well, I can offer this now. Mm. We can work this mm. way. You're going to make even more progress. Yeah. You know, and and just limit it to like two people or limit mm. it to three people so that you don't you don't feel like you're being pulled in too many di- too many directions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't you don't want to have 10, you don't want to have eight people. If, if eight people are interested, yeah, that's great, but you can't do eight people. Yeah. Just you. You have to be able, you have to somehow, you have to divide that up. Yeah. Um, and know that it's, you know, it takes, that it takes time yeah and that they, and they have to understand that it's going to take, it's going to take time, but if they're willing to, you know, to be patient and to kind of, you know, to, to go with you and to understand mm. that mm. there's one piece of equipment, yeah. you know, and that they yeah. have that, that they have to work with that. They're the ones who, but they're the ones you want, because yeah. then you can really, yeah you can really work with them. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. I, it, the, the hardest thing is careful that you don't take on too many at one at one time yeah. with, with regards to that yeah because you still need practice with that it's one thing to do the circuits yeah and, and holding everybody kind of, at a safe and have them, yeah yeah and have them kind of on their own but it's another to like take them from okay now it's a goblet squat now we're going to start to actually you know train with a with a barbell mm. i mean it can be a 10 pound bar it can be a 15 pound bar it doesn't matter but it's a it's a it's a different movement you yeah. have to you're watching how they come out of the rack how they re-rack and yeah. You know, it's a whole, yeah. it's a whole other, you know, it's a whole other game there. Um, yeah. and that requires more, that requires more attention on your part to, until they become more independent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and doing that. Yeah. And, and I guess one of the barriers I was putting in was, but what will happen? Where will they go? But then that really is up to them to find a gym it is. or put stuff yes. in their garage or do yes. something, isn't it? I can't let that be a barrier to me creating this space and actually, and, and making this, this, this become, and reality. If they, mm. Yeah. If they want more yeah. and they're coming to you, then you have to say, well, if mm. we want, if you want to do more, it's, it has to be now, now this we're talking yeah. about, I guess, a fee, you know, yeah. because you want to make sure that your time, your time is valuable. Mm. Mm. Um, and the fact that you are a doctor mm. and offering this, mm. 
have even more to give. Yeah. I mean, so many doctors don't know this um, when they tell people to just exercise or mm. just go for a walk. Mm. Mm. And most people don't know what that means. And then you have a, a doctor who says, you need a strength training program. And by the way, I can offer that to you yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. myself, you know, um, it's worth a lot more. So, but I think you, you know, you just kind of get like getting, letting people get their toes wet mm. this and seeing who bites, like yeah. who wants to continue and who kind of just was, you know, is happy doing just that. They will make progress. Doesn't matter. It, it, they, any, they tell me they're and, making progress. Yeah, they tell they me. Are, and they are, they are, yeah. they are. You don't, it, you don't, you don't realize that mm. they really are. I mean, I have, um, uh, I have a gentleman who just did his fifth session with me. He's once a week. Mm. And from day one to day three, he was able to, he's able to, to get out of a, out of a chair off of a box so much easier. Mm. I mean, the first day I had him, he had to pe- use both hands and he pried himself out of the seat. Mm. I mean, we're talking about like, like literally pried himself out of, out. I, I wasn't sure if he was actually going to stand up. Mm. Um, and I knew that that was something we were going to, we were going to work on. He's you know, tall, about six, five. Um, he's the father of one of my members mm. and he had a knee replacement in um, November, a second knee replacement. Um, and the other day he sat down to put, to put the shoes on and he stood up and he was up before I even realized mm. he was, he was up. And then when he left, it's habit for him to put his hand on this, on the chair, but he put, he had one hand on the chair and his other hand, he had his keys, his wallet, his yeah. sunglasses. Yeah. And he just, he just stood right up. It wasn't even a big deal. Yeah. That was four sessions. Yeah. Yeah. That and was I, just four sessions. And, you know, so it doesn't take, and all we're doing is body weight box squats. Mm, That's what we started with, right? Mm, to like basically the a, a chair height. Yeah. So it, and, you know, we're talking like sets of five type yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. It doesn't take, it doesn't take much. So it's just, it's just moving and yeah. moving your body. So the more they move, the better they're going to get, mm. the better they're going to feel. Mm. Those who want to do more will do more. Those who are happy just continuing where they are and just it becomes a social, yeah, you know, thing. Um, and they're doing something physical for their bodies. It, it's it's a win. It's a win on both. It's a win. You've yeah, got the people true. who want more and the people who really just are happy that they're doing something physical and they get to see people. Mm. And eventually it's something that something will click and then they're like, this feels really easy now. Can I, yeah. what can I do to make it harder? Yeah. And that's when you say, oh, well, you know, you can hold this weight, yeah. especially if there's somebody who hasn't held any weight or hasn't changed their weight in forever. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think I always oftentimes leave it up to, you know, my, my members, those who, those who push themselves, I know I can push them. Yeah. Those who I have to kind of encourage, I'll keep it light. I definitely keep it light. I'm always conservative. So that there's room mm. to, 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 you know, to, to, to grow um, and let them say, this is getting easy. Mm. Mm. You know, I mean, it's the most important thing is that you're, that they're doing, that they're doing this and yeah. that they're, and that they're being physical and that they're realizing the benefit of it. Yeah. And hopefully we'll tell other people. Yeah. 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 I listened to, um, uh, Rip did a podcast very recently with Will Morris. He's a physio. He's mm-hmm. a PT, mm-hmm. but, and it was, it was yep. really interesting. It really kind of, you know, planted a couple of seeds in my mind because, you know, most of what they're saying, it wasn't new. Uh, no. But Will's talking about, you know, again, coaching three people through pain, things we've talked about many times. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I kept thinking, you know, in many ways, the, the people I see in clinic, in a standard GP clinic, I've, I've said this to you many times before, they're coming to the wrong person. You know, they're coming yeah. to, they're coming for a painkiller. They're coming for a referral yeah. to physio yeah. who now gives them a phone call and tells yeah. them to, you know, do a few exercises over the phone. They don't even see them. Yeah. Um, and I guess this is what my friend was alluding to in that, you know, I, I look at what these people need to do and I'm not using my medical training. I'm thinking, well, you've come to me as a doctor, but actually what you need is to practice this movement pattern. Um, mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. I, there was something Will said in that interview about, you know, physios get hung up on training individual muscles. And actually the yes. only difference I do is train the movement patterns. And I thought, yeah, yes. there, that, that is yes. it in, in a nutshell. Yes. Um, <laughs> never mind what your quads do or, you know, this, the, your tricep does. It's the whole system yeah. know, is what matters. And, and I've, I've listened to that twice through thinking it, it felt like a little nudge towards I've, I've got to stop pushing people back from this. I did. I did in a, one of my many roles is I do GP appraisals. We have to have an annual appraisal as a GP, mm-hmm. and just, you know, just go over what you're doing to keep up, up to date. 
and this I hadn't appraised this guy before um um, and we got chatting and I thought that he doesn't do very much GP wise. There must be something else. Um, anyway, he, sometimes people are a bit guarded as to how much they, yeah. they want to talk about. Um, but it turns out yeah. he's got a YouTube channel and he sells kind of eight week diet programs. He's part of the low mm. carb community. And mm-hmm. You know, I've mm-hmm. been I've been in that community and kind of mm-hmm. come through again the other side. And it has value for some people. It can be a useful tool. Yes. Um, so. We, we got chatting and, and and I was going after his appraisal off to my strength class. So I had the the, the jumper on and stuff. And he asked me about it. He said, well, would you come on and and talk about strength training to, to my to my subscribers, basically? I said, well, yeah, I'll talk about it to anybody. Um, <laughs> it was great fun. He kind of interviewed me in his it was a Zoom chat. His various of his yeah. um, his subscribers were on and asking me questions about it. And, and it was lovely. I really enjoyed being able to talk about it. Um but he approached me afterwards and, and said, oh, if, if I can in any way return the favour. And I said, well, at some point I might want to ask you about the online stuff that you do because it's mm-hmm. wearing it away with our regulator, the General Medical Council. And he says, well, I have spoken to them about it. And it, they're very, I'm very clear this is a coaching role. So although I am a doctor, I'm not their doctor and I'm not right. offering medical advice. I thought, OK, right. that's, that's fine. And I know Solly doesn't have this challenge now because he's retired from from his right. practice so there's some stuff around that that I need to be absolutely clear about uh-huh. but then he also said to me at the end oh, by the way if you start doing anything online it'd be great for my mom <laughs> um, <laughs> and I've had several people who say that and I always knock them back and I think after listening to the the, the podcast with with Will Morris I thought I probably need to just start opening up to this and as being something that I say yes to and stop pushing it back because now I am yeah. getting the practical experience yes I'm yes. running out of excuses other yes. than yet yeah, I don't necessarily I still have um you know the 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 people in the academy I was just looking actually over some of the videos that were posting in the academy slack channel today and, and thinking I still struggle with a lot of that that the, those mm-hmm. form corrections it's still mm-hmm. come naturally to me but actually, it doesn't matter in real life as much as I right. thought it would. Yes. And that's what I need to hang on to and go, OK, yes. yeah, people can still yes. make good progress, especially yes. older rehabby type people. Yes, yes. Um, they're not going to be lifting, you know, several hundred pounds off the floor anytime no. soon. So I don't no. really need that. No, no. I mean, and that's and that's the thing, the population that you're working with and I have a populate I have you know I have my older my older uh, population at the gym and they're fantastic and I want to work with more more people who are I'd say 65 plus mm. that's really you know and I'm I have the I'm I'm getting that opportunity you know I have I have my member's father who's just joined us he's 71 and I have a good friend of my mom's who's my mom I think she might be 71 or 72 she just started back with me she had been doing she'd been doing kind of my my more like my circuit training class, mm. my basic training class that does goblet squats mm. and push ups and things like that. But she decided she finally decided she realized she's got to she's got to do something. Mm. You know, she's been she's has now four grandchildren under the age of four. Mm. Wow. Right. Yeah. Busy. And she's and, so, and and as I was talking to one of my other members, a lot of many people are having children later mm. in life, which means the grandparents oh. are older. Mm. Right. They're mm. older. They're in their 70s. Mm. They're not in their 50s mm. or 60s. Like, you know, when my sister had her kids, I mean, Jack is 15 now and my niece is 12. Mm. My parents are 79 and 73. Well, they're older now. Mm. They don't have. But so they were younger. They were they were they were more able body. Now, my mom is doing fantastic because she trains mm. and my dad's in great shape, too. Mm. But you know, many people may not be in great shape and their children are having children mm. later in life. So now they have, they end up with like two and three year olds and they're in their seventies mm. and they can't get down the floor to play with them. Or they're worried about babysitting for them because mm. they're afraid that they can't take care of them because what happens if I fall, I can't get up. I mean, it's, and that's, and that's a, a skill that I, you know, I teach, I teach, mm. definitely teach to, to many of my older clients. Some don't necessarily need it because they're so able-bodied, like they're, they have an athletic background already. They're like, you know, one of my members is a, a runner. Mm. And then I have, of course, Manny, you know, mm. champion power of at age yeah. 74. <laughs> so I don't, so those guys I'm not too worried about, but I have, you know, but my mom's friend who was out for a walk one day and tripped and fell and couldn't get up herself mm. and had to be helped up by my mom and her friend. Mm. So teaching people how to get down the floor Mm. and get up off off the floor is just as important 
I was I teaching would, them how to squat and teaching them how to de- pick up things off the floor and the movement pattern, like you're saying, I mean, that is really, I've been stressing that so much more with people, my older clients, especially mm. this is, will help you in your daily living. Mm. This will make everything you do better. This will be, this is quality of life. Mm. And the deadlift as you're saying is your favorite. That's the most, I feel like that's one of the most important lifts because they're constantly picking, we're constantly picking things up. Mm. Squatting, we sit down on the toilet, we sit on a couch. If we can at least stand up from that, mm. we're golden. It's the picking things up off the floor and carrying something mm. or putting something away. Mm. That is where that deadlift and upper body work has is is even more important mm. because then they can they feel like they can actually do more in their house. Yeah. They're not afraid to get down onto the floor mm. because they can get back up. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's those essential things that I think people, you know, they don't realize that a little bit extra movement mm. like that you're teaching them is going to help all the, and that's why they see it. That's why the minute they start moving mm. and picking things up and things are get things get easier at home. Mm. And even just once a week mm. can make it, like you say, you've, you realize that they say it makes all the difference. Yeah. We don't need that much. And for like an 80 year old. Yeah. I mean, twice a week is great if they can, if they can do it, but honestly, consistency is the, is the key, right. And compliance. If they're complying with a program, as Diego says, it it, it could be the stupidest program in the world, but if you stick with it and you do it every week, you'll make progress. Yeah. Things, you know, things will improve. So, and so I think you're realizing that yourself, like you don't have to, you don't have to be perfect. No. I mean, what I'm teaching so many of these these two clients, they don't have a bar on their back. Mm. They learn how to deadlift mm. there, but it's, you know, but, and they may, they might be benching, but mm. again, it's a light bar and they might be pressing, but it's, again, it's a very light bar, Yeah. but it's just the movement. It's just moving them, Yeah. getting them to go overhead, getting them to pick something off the floor. I make them do carries mm. so a farmer's carries with like a kettlebell or push the prowler. Just okay. That's, some, yeah. I'm going to make a note of that. Cause that was the other thing I was thinking yeah. is, you know, because they're a bit restless in between, um, especially right. once they are more familiar with it. Yes. Um, what else is really useful? And Mary said to me, what about lunges? And I went, oh, I don't like lunges. They always hurt my Do, knees. <laughs> so, so yeah. So here, so I was thinking about this actually, as you're talking about them getting restless, because that's um, for my older, for my, so for my clients who can do, who are doing the barbell work, mm. they're, they're doing the barbell work. They're doing They got a program, right? Mm. They're squatting, they're pressing, they're benching, they're deadlifting. Mm. And they're resting in between and they know, they, they know the benefits of resting. They, they understand it. It's all there. But then I have my clients who, like, you know, my, mm. my two clients I who don't do, yeah. uh, they're, they're not doing any squatting right now with a barbell and their deadlifts go like, go, go, go through like this. And they're mm. benching very light. Uh, bands are fantastic. Do you have bands? Yes. We've got bands. So band work. I use that as kind of like my active recovery. So in between a squat, so they'll do a set of squats yeah, and then. I'll have them do like pull aparts or face pulls okay. or they could do rows. So something like that, if they're not, if they're not using a lot of weight or they're using no yeah. weight at all, they're going to be finished their squats in like, you know, two seconds. Yeah. Um, you certainly can give them more squatting. They can do sets of eight. Do mm. they have to be sets of five? doesn't have to be sets of five. I think they're, they're doing whatever they feel like when I'm not walking. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, they're just, you know, they're squatting up and yeah. down, up and down. So, and if they're so, but if they have a routine where you do a set, now you go over there and you do a set of face pulls and you teach them what a face pull is yeah. you teach them what a pull apart. That is an incredible that's that you get, you're getting the best. You're getting some back work. You're getting some extra upper body work. Mm, the carrying thing. That's, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. That is um, something you could do. You could do with squats too. You could yeah. certainly have them do a set of squats and then pick up a, if there's a weight there, yeah. walk, walk something down, walk it back, do yeah. another set of squats. So those, that's, those are good active yeah. recovery exercises that mm-hmm. keeps them moving and is giving them an additional, mm. additional, additional movement mm. work, right? Mm. Additional that's not going to interfere with the activity that they're, yeah. the exercise that they're doing. Carries are like you know carrying a grocery bag. That's yeah. what I always say. The head, the farmers carries. You just got two heavy grocery bags. Suitcase carry, which is just one, mm-hmm. one weighted carry, is your suitcase. Yeah, it's your heavy grocery bag. Yeah. You got to switch hands. It's it's down and back. Yeah, they get the they get the deadlift in there because you make them put it down. Yeah, and then pick it back up again. Not just not just switch hands. Okay. So yeah, those are I. So those are I think that in a in a program for 
for older mm-hmm. for older clients, especially ones who are not necessarily following a, a strict barbell program. Yeah, those extra exercises will give them even more. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's m- more work to do mm-hmm. without interfering with what they're doing now, and it's not going to exhaust them. It's not going to yeah. tire them. They're, they might be they might be hard. Like my clients find like the face pulls, the pull aparts very challenging. The gentleman I, I started with, when I started doing those, he's like, I can't believe a little band like this mm. can make me sweat Cry. so much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I mean, you're, you're talking about work, like how, when's, when's the last time that they squeezed their shoulder blades together? Mm. Mm. I mean, they're learning how to do that when they're deadlifting, but you have them doing it with like, even mm. with a little band or rows, yeah. they're, they're getting more bang mm. for their buck now yeah. with, with that in regards to like their, the class it makes them feel like they're doing more, which mm-hmm. they are, mm. and it's making them rest. Yeah, it's ma- it's giving it's t- teaching them how to like take a take a minute. And honestly, they might do a set of face pulls and feel like mm. I got to rest. I have to mm. rest now. That was actually hard harder work than the squatting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, um, that's so really useful actually. And I think the carries as well. Um, yes, because there's loads of kettlebells. There's a full set of dumbbells, and actually, yeah. oh, yeah. we're not yeah. using all of those. And actually, just setting that up because there's space for it. Mm-hmm. And actually, that mm-hmm. would be really useful to go. Okay, mm-hmm. well, you know, you've, you've grinded through those squats and moaned about it, but actually, now put it into practice and, and carry that. So I shall definitely, um, I'll add yeah. that in. That, that's a really good idea. I think then you can do that too with the pressing group. The pressing yeah. group can do if the if the goblet squat group is doing maybe squats and carries. Mm. And the pressing group, when they have, when they get to the pressing, they do as they, they warm up, they get to whatever mm. they're doing and they finish, they, they do their set and then they do a set of rows yeah. with the, with the bands yeah. or they still do a set of pull apart. So maybe you, 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 um, you pair the pressing with the pulling, mm. right? I mean, that's, that's a way to do it. And then the deadlift um, area they're just deadlifting. They don't they have, have to, to, you know, yeah, they, they, they might yeah. have plate shifting around. They're changing plates. So they're, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's yeah. it takes time for them, but the other two groups having that, because if you're finding that they're like, you know, they're just kind of rushing through stuff, mm. slow, slow them down by making them do two exercises. And that way they have to stop. Yeah. And they're resting from that. They're doing something, you know, you yeah. teach them how to, how to, how to pull, they're going to learn better what their upper back is doing. And mm. it's just going to carry over into the other. Mm the other lifts mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. because I've had to do quite a bit of reframing for them about about um pain and being aware you know for mm-hmm. example as, as some of them have got more um they've challenged themselves a little bit more with the press and they'll say well, yep. is it normal to feel my lower back yes yeah, okay you're using all of your middle to stabilize this thing above your head so it's yeah. okay if you yeah. feel it in, in your middle and your back um so Each, let them yeah but let them let them know that if they're feeling maybe too much in their lower back are they squeezing their butt enough are they mm. using their legs mm. that the whole press is yeah. a, is you know their the kinetic chain starts from their the, the feet right yeah. and goes all the way up to the top so the entire body is working yeah not they're not just doing upper body quote mm. unquote upper body mm. so remind them squeeze your legs more like mm. one like my mom's friend she was pressing she says I feel if I, if I squeeze my legs, like, it feels a lot easier because <laughs> I was like, yes, it does. You, yeah. you just, you just realized what, you know, what you have to do. You have to support that weight over yeah. your head, yeah. your entire trunk, including your legs. Yeah. Right. And it has to be yeah. holding you and stabilizing you. So, you know, so, so yes. Yeah, so I think if you remind them to squeeze, they might find that, oh, wow, I, I don't feel it as much because mm. that is, that is something like, you, yes, it, it, you're working everything, but mm. But, but the low, the low back, if you're keeping the abs on, if you're keeping, if you're learning how to like kind of keep your abs nice and tight, but more importantly, kind of squeeze your butt, mm, mm, I tell them like, squeeze mm, your butt, make mm, sure your, make sure your legs are tight. Then they, they notice that mm, it, they, they feel a little bit less. I have noticed as well, um, on the deadlift and on the squat that how important it is for them to set their eye gaze. So yes. what, initially with the deadlifting, they look down and they look up and they look down and they look up yes. um, and they get dizzy and they get dizzy. And I keep having to say, <laughs> pick a spot and I'm going to make yes. some signs that just say, look here and don't yeah. move your eyes. And it immediately gets yeah. better. And actually it, it, it helps them set their back in the deadlift mm-hmm. enormously if they just look up and not look down at the floor. Sometimes yes. that's the only cue I need to give. Actually, move yes. to there, and actually the back just sorts itself out. Um, it falls apart a little bit by rep number four or five, um, and then they sometimes have a still t- a tendency. It's surprising mm-hmm. how many times you have to repeat something 
uh, to go yeah. in. <laughs> as my, as my, as my, my, mem- my clients will attest, they say to me, you know, you're so patient. Or they say to my, all my coaches, wow, you're so patient. You told me this yesterday, or you told me this last week. I'm like, that's my job. Yeah. My job is to remind you. That's what the cue is. The yeah. cue is a reminder, right? And if I have to cue you every single time you come in, I will do that. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. And they're yeah. like, I should remember. It's like, there are a lot, there are a lot of pieces to remember. Mm. If you have to, eventually you will, you will remember mm-hmm. you will, because you'll identify with like, why am I getting dizzy? Oh, right. Emily told me to keep my eyes yeah. straight ahead and I'm still looking down yeah. you know, at the ground. Yeah. It, there's a little habits that eventually go away, but it's um the, the cues I, I do find. Yes. I cue people over and over and over again. It doesn't bother me. Mm, mm. It, you know, and they're like, does it bother you? I'm like, why would it bother me? Yeah. It's my This is what we're here for. Right. Mm. I'm here to, to help you move better. Yeah. And if, if my cueing you that little, that little like eyes, shoulders, yeah. knees, yeah. those, then you, then it becomes a little bit more, you know, yeah. it becomes more natural. And the big people are always like, I should remember this. I'm like, you, but you don't have to, I mean, they remember it eventually. when they do it. So there was, there was a lady this yeah. week and I said, keep that, but she was deadlifting, keep it close to your shins. Cause it was floating off. Cause it was light. Yeah. Um, I said, I want that bar in contact with your legs all of the way up. And when she finally did it, she went, Oh yeah, it felt much easier when I did that. I know that's why I'm trying to bring you around. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> You'll get away with it. And eventually, um, I think it was it was CJ I was listening to is something he says that there comes a point where where your body will automatically find the most efficient bar path anyway when it's heavy enough. Well, we're not heavy enough with any no. population to get yeah, to yes. that point. But occasionally yes. they have these little moments where it does come together and they go, Oh yeah. Or actually they remember they're very very nervous about holding their breath that's needed a lot mm-hmm. of reassurance as well and, mm-hmm. and this is where I've just I've had slight um the other the other the, the personal trainer who's there who's very experienced and done lots of courses that exist here to be able to have people on referral for, from a doctor um yeah. and apparently not holding your breath is the thing that everybody is is taught in in that arena um, mm-hmm. and I'm going well maybe I would if you're going to push something up I would rather you're not kind of wobbly in the middle and actually everything yes. is held nice and stable yes you can let a bit out at the top and you can reset at the bottom and, and mm-hmm. don't have to quite delicately step around that issue and again it's I'm not worried about it because nobody's doing anything particularly heroic with weights no and again I think it's the it's you have to it's the it's the separation of the of the people too who those who are going to want to do more with you yeah and you say to them, I need you to take a big breath and hold it. Mm. They'll, they'll do it because they understand that's way, this way it's heavy. And I have to really keep my trunk tight. Mm. And then the rest of the group, the rest of those who are just going to ha- be happy continuing yeah. with what they're doing, as long as they're just not talking while they're, yeah. <laughs> while, while they're, while they're doing it, or they're thinking of somewhat like when I, when I have to squat, I test I just take a breath mm. and I squat down, I come up and I let the air out. You, if you, you know, I think if you just say, take a, take a breath, or mm. I'll tell people when the bar is moving, you're not breathing. Yeah. So just remember when the bar is moving, I don't want yeah, you, that's good. Yeah. you know, I want you, I don't want you breathing. So, um, because I, I don't, I definitely don't overemphasize the breathing too much with people who are using real lightweight mm. because there's, they're there, they're thinking about so many things. I'll just say, take a, take a breath. Mm. Good. Get a big breath. Hold it. Yeah. Okay, let it out. Yeah. You know, and I'll and I'll show them like when they're benching, like I want your mouth closed. Mm. And then you can let the air out, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And eventually, like my mom's friend, she was benching and she was, she was, she's a swimmer. Mm. So her breathing, she understands she can hold her breath for mm. a long, long time. Mm. So she was having a trouble because I was asking her to let the air out and take another breath in. And she wanted to hold her breath the whole time, but right. the bar is bouncing around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because she's learning how to use learning. Eventually, but towards the end of the uh, end of the bench session. She was taking a breath, holding mm. it, letting it out, you know, mm. when she, when she locked her arms out. Um, but I, I don't emphasize too much with people who are not pushing like the heavier weights, like the, my clients who are definitely like lifting, who yeah. are training, like my mom and Manny and they're like, they're, you could see them taking that breath and holding it. Mm-hmm. They, 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 it, it, it makes sense to them. Mm. They know because they're, the others yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to necessarily mess with it because you, because they, they, it will, it will happen naturally. As yeah. you said, like as a little bit, they'll start to learn that they, you know, they need to concentrate yeah. on what they're doing and they won't think of twice about the, you know, about their, about their breathing, but it is, um, it's a, it's a balancing act. Mm. You're, you're starting, you're starting to figure out the balancing act of those who are a little bit more serious. 
than mm. those who are not as serious, but those who are even the non-serious people are seeing the benefit of this. Yeah. How do you keep the, how do you keep them engaged? How do you keep them, you know, um, yeah, happy and, and coming back and, and wanting to do this more. Yeah. 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 And, and, and kind of letting them guide themselves. And, and we haven't advertised outside of the, the setting. These are all people anyway. So, you know, we have talked about actually if, if we really wanted to step this up, but you know, we don't know if we have capacity for that. And, yeah. and you know, and, and then it comes down to well, what people will pay and, and right. And just the logistics of, of juggling it in and around all the other clients. Yeah. But we're coming yeah. to that point now where they will close for a week to set up the outdoor trail now the weather's a bit better yeah. and so um so it, it's just doing a little bit of planning really and I and I suppose um for me as well thinking okay if I now get some more hands-on one-on-one or one-on-two maybe I should think more seriously about because I, I'm still in the academy but I've kind of stepped back from from mm-hmm. a lot of that because the only the, the only next step that I can do with that is to go on and try that and, and pass the exam. <laughs> and, exactly. And right. As, as I've yeah. said to you before, actually, I don't feel like I've got enough coaching experience to do it justice. With the barbell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But actually, you know, if if now that, that there's a view to us get, uh, giving me a space and, and uh, mm-hmm. what we'll do um, is hi- ideally look for a grant um, and having costed out what we need today. And I'll run through it with you in a sec. But I think to be yeah. honest. In grant terms, it's it's less than two thousand pounds. So uh, mm. I mean, mm. that's that's nothing, nothing in grant terms. No. Um, yeah, and actually making a space. So I, I think that's actually very achievable. Yeah. Um, but she did say to me last week, detail everything that you think we'll need because when you get mm-hmm. grants, you can't faff around and go, mm-hmm. oh, you know, you've got to be ready to go. Yeah, this is what. Yeah, we need to yeah, do yeah. Um, exactly, exactly. Um, but I think really the only the bits I wanted to ask you about there's there's a friend of Max who mm-hmm. who's in the academy and he's a golf pro. But he, mm-hmm. he he's doing this. The, he's in the academy and he coaches from his shop. His pro, and so he bought one of these racks that folds against the wall. It's a road mm-hmm. version. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. seen any of those. Mm-hmm. I have. He, yes, he's really happy with it. Um, yeah. And I've been looking at them, thinking mm, that, that you can then use that floor space, I guess, for, yes. for something else. Yes. It could be folded yes. out of the way. Yes. Um, so that might be even a, yes. a, a more realistic option. I don't know if you've any strong views about. I only only just make sure that the wall is yeah. supported enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's I think that no, that's that's seriously that mm. like that's it. Like drywall, mm, like no, no, I wouldn't no. put I wouldn't put a you know any I wouldn't use that in my gym. Mm. But if I've got a con like a concrete wall, I mean something like that. You mean as long as it's and you're and you're t- probably talking about you're not really going to be lifting mm. probably too much yeah. weight either, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, the fold out rack, the fold out um, squat stands are are very inexpensive. Yeah, I was thinking of getting. They're on my list to have an additional set anyway. But I think at least that- for yeah for pressing and honestly for squatting, like you know you can. I mean, you can squat out of a squat stand. You just have to make sure that if you're if the person's um, you know uh, squatting, you know weight, you need to have your spotters. But mm. you can have people spotting. Yeah. I mean, people spot. Um, but again, it doesn't sound like I, you know, that you wouldn't necessarily need to worry about spotters just, just no, with, with I, this group. If anything, but... having looked at m- majority of them, I probably, I would need a safety bar, um, which mm-hmm. um, as far as I can see, they do start at 20 kilos. Um, you know, that that's the lightest, but I just think that probably it, there's so many crumbly shoulders. Yeah, that... no. So yeah, no, I, um, we have. Our safety, we have two safety bars, safety squat bars, and they both weigh, yeah, 20 kilos, like about 40 pounds, yeah. right? Um, and Pete bought one for Orlando and his weighs even less. So you can oh, get it custom. Different. Right. You could you could get it custom. Yeah, you could get it custom made. I mean, the the gentleman who I don't know, you know, how 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 he ships if you, you know, but mm. or maybe you could find you could find it out in um near you, but I think Pete got even a lighter one because mm. Many of those weigh, I mean, we're lucky that ours weighs 40 pounds mm-hmm. because um, I think like Rogue or Titan, they're, they they weigh like 60 or I know, 70. I saw I mean, that. They can, they can very like, heavy. This will be no and way. that's really tricky. Yeah, it's really tricky to have. And you, because you can't just, I, I can't use that bar with my, with any new clients, any new older clients. Mm. I mean, if they can't squat, you know, 10 pounds, they're not going mean, to have to yeah. work them up with a dumbbell before yeah. they can actually use that, that bar. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's kind of, um, it's a cumbersome, it's a, I, I find that, I mean, shoulder, sh- yeah, shoulder wise, 
Um, a camber bar, a camber bar is even, is even nicer to use because okay. you can still, you know, I just, many of my clients will wear, will use that. My mom uses that to squat with, right. um, um, that due to her frozen shoulder and it allows you to sit back and do more of a low bar, right. A okay. low bar squat where the safety bar, you're way more upright. Um, I find, uh, Martha tried it once. She didn't like it. Mm. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. like my hip doesn't hurt too badly. <laughs> I'll use the barbell. Okay. Um, but a camber bar, there are never any, any shoulder issues with, with that. It's a little bit, and those are very light. Those are much lighter. Okay. Well, can, maybe that'd be more appropriate so. then. Cause I haven't, I've, I've never actually had my hands on a safety bar and, and you yeah. know, I would like to see what it feels like myself. Um, yes rather before putting somebody under it and as you say if actually you're more upright then that's another new challenge so maybe maybe that isn't as feasible as I thought but I keep thinking there's there's people that are going to need to make that jump Mm -hmm. um at some point and you know I I get them with just a a spongy foot you know those 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 bars that are quite spongy and few kilos it's gonna be hard and they go oh my goodness and they feel it across the chest the chest is so tight that they go I could never do this like when you can't but it might take a few weeks and I would want that to be a barrier so if actually the there's a cambered bar let me I'm going to write that down I like the Um, yeah the cam I mean cambered bars are 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 cool we have I have just we have just the one but we it, it doesn't seem to be um the safety bar, a lot of people will use that. A lot of my younger clients will mm. use it. I use it too. Um, but the cambered bar, my mom moves, uses that one so easily. And Manny used it too when his shoulder with his elbow was bothering him. It doesn't affect your shoulders at all because you hold it down by your side, right? right. And the and it just sits, it can just sit on your shoulder on your on your back, but it does mimic more of that low bar okay. um movement. Um, so if they've been if they've been teach if they've been learning that movement pattern it mm. it's kind of like an in-between a safety bar squat and the bar okay. you know the straight bar um and ours weighs 25 pounds oh okay well that would be and good. i use that yeah. yeah and i use that with claire my my client who has cerebral palsy yeah i use that with her and she handled it very well okay well so, yeah I, you know. I mean there wouldn't be anybody more restricted than than that um mm-hmm. that i think would be would be willing to so so look into, up yeah. So look, yeah, look in, look into that, looking to see yeah. what, what you can acquire there because it is, that is the tricky part. I mean, you know, you want to go heavier, but a straight bar is very, can be very cumbersome. Mm. It just can't, it just, it just doesn't even won't work. Mm. You know, it won't work. Um, now that, I mean, the safety bar, I have a client who uses it as kind of a, he, he's, he's kind of does a, a low bar squat. He mm. sits back and he leans over. He just kind of raises the, the handles up. Right. right? Um, but it, you know, so it, it can be used, but it did, again, I think you can find a, a lighter, the camber bar usually, they usually start much lighter mm, mm. than the, the, uh, the safety bar. Okay. Um, so a little easier to transport, but, yeah. um, I know, I mean, trying to rig us, trying to rig a barbell with like straps and, and things is just, I tried it myself, um, hearing Hot Sully did a video about it a long time ago yeah. and my shoulder was yeah. pissed off, which it is again. Yeah um and I tried to hold the bar just so that I could still squat and I thought it just doesn't feel very stable it doesn't feel right yeah <laughs> it feels like a seesaw on your back and yeah thought, no. and that's what that's where that's where a safety bar mm. comes in I mean there's so many different types of bars these days right there's like the Mars bar and then there's the Buffalo bar I mean they're all these different bars and it's for it's the fact that just shoulders yeah you know, I mean, we're tight. We yeah. sit, I mean, I'm, I, I'm looking at myself right now trying to sit like this, yeah. you know, yeah. we sit with our shoulders, we, our shoulders mm. rounded so that you're right. You feel this big, huge stretch. Mm. Um, and then you, over time, you know, older, um, older individual individuals that they haven't really been doing much, mm. you know, they, their kyphosis sets in mm. like that back is just, mm. it's rounded and it's set. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. I mean, yeah. you can't, you can't, they can't extend their upper back. Yeah any more than they can you know than they're trying so yeah and then there comes a point that just holding you know a two, well I've got we've got two 10 kilo dumbbells mm-hmm. but actually it's, yeah. it's slightly awkward and um it's hard it, it's hard to hold it in front your arms yep. tire before yep it's tire really and so that's yep. it. yeah actually we need to make that jump um yeah and, and it's navigating that but that's that's the real really the only kind of technical challenge that I, mm-hmm. I can foresee um and then, yeah, an extra set of squat stands as well as a rack. I thought, well, that easily lends itself. And then something yeah. to store the things on. Yep. And that's it. A couple of sets that's of plates. It. I really can't yeah. think of anything else. I was racking my brains this morning thinking, 
no, that really is. Yeah, no, I think you need, yeah, you need, um, if you have a, if you have light bars for the pressing, like I have a 10 pound bar, I have a 15 pound bar. Mm. Um, I mean, those are technique bars and I have a 33 pound bar. So if you have, you know, light Mm. enough bars that you can add weight to, I mean, uh, unless you're talking like a lot of weight, you don't need, you don't need a, you know, you don't need a crazy number of bars, but, um, Mm. a squat stand and then more plates, um, yeah, that yeah, that was that was all I could think of really. I, I I didn't think there's anything else. Yeah, anything else on there? Um, yeah, just I just wondered. I, I guess the only other thing with with a standard rack, I was looking at mine this morning, thinking you have that bit of dead space between the wall and the rack, you know, where the mm-hmm. legs stick out. And I thought, well, I suppose you could store plates behind there anyway, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't necessarily be wasted space. I'll maybe just have to go and test the walls on Wednesday and. Yes. Um, and, and see what we think about that and um, yeah. whether or not we're better off just getting it. This is awesome. This is awesome. I know. It's great. It's really. I remember when you were talking, when you were just talking about this and just, and now it's actually happening. I know. It does it's still fantastic. Like a lot of talking and a lot less. No, talking. it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really feel partly because. I'm envious. Let's oh, yeah. just say that I'm envious. Uh, you have like a group of people, like you have like yeah. four people at each station and they're all over the age of like 70 yeah. doing it. I'm envious because that's, that is, you know, I, I, I mean, I love my, I love all my members, but I have a very soft spot mm. and more, I'm growing more and more in that direction of like, I really want to work with yeah. older clients. I really want to work with the older population, especially because people are living longer, doing more. Yeah having grandchildren when they, and they're older. I mean, it's just, there's, there's yeah. so, there, it's so it's very, it's very exciting. It's very um, uh, rewarding. And I think I, what, what I have realized is, yeah, I don't love the big group because there's, there's so less time to actually yeah. talk to people yeah. as you're doing it. And, and I was saying this yeah. to my friend is I've got to make sure that I include the bits that are the most fulfilling and that won't be one of the reasons I haven't really used my garage to have people um and and mac alluded to this is that once they know what they're doing you're just counting reps and helping them change the plates and um and that's okay up to a point but it's actually it's it's that first stage that's the really fulfilling bit you know the Mm -hmm. initial teaching and Mm -hmm. showing people and actually when they're quite familiar with it i almost want to move them on and and say yeah that's fine you you can do this now we'll just check in a little bit more and bring the next people into it yeah which is is not so easy in in a big group but but i never Mm -hmm. you know i never set out to um to run group group classes right. in any right like that. right I've right from this for but um but it, it has been um it, ha- it has been it's been great and really interesting to to actually work out for myself as well which bits are that's awesome the great bits and um yeah and and, and to take forward but but I love it I love hearing how it's helped them um yes. I love hearing them tell their kids that they're doing yes. this and, and the responses yes. that they get back. Oh, I was deadlifting and this I told my son I was deadlifting and he just didn't believe me. You think <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And the other great thing about this population is you don't have to um you don't have to be chasing them on social media <laughs> because they're not looking at all of that anyway. Nope. Um, I was saying this, I was trying to explain to my cousins in Spain at the, the weekend um what it is that I'm doing and and um in as much as my sp- rusty spanish would allow um but i was saying to them as well i said well you might have seen a little bit on on my prescription strength but other than that i've, I've, I've stopped using instagram yeah um, and yeah I said, and it's great because actually i can coach this this type of, of population and they're not looking and, and getting all you know body conscious or or worrying about what they're posting their lives or any of that it just leaves all of that out of it which is no which is no great. no um no this pop the, the the population um and you know you and i will in, in another how many years there 20 some years mm. <laughs> will be in that population <laughs> You know, I mean, we're, you know, I'm, I'm looking, people always like, why do you, why do you look forward to getting older? I'm like, I look forward to getting older because I've learned so much more about, Mm. about my body and Mm. about, you know, about aging Mm. and the importance of strength, strength and strength training and, and uh, delivering that to, to others. Um, You become so less self-conscious about your body. Like, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's not about that for my mom and her friends. Yeah. Or for, you know, Manny and his wife. I mean, it's it's not about that. It's about they love what they love their life now. They love yeah. their life. They have kids. They have grandkids. They want to be able to do more. Mm. They want to be able to, you know, they're they're new learning something new. It's just a whole different world. Yeah. If it's something that other people aren't doing. Yeah. 
Um, and they're, they're not, you know, they might, I, I do find my mom will say, I saw a video on YouTube of somebody doing such and such. Mm, yeah. was, she goes, I found myself going down a rabbit hole. I kept watching people <laughs> goblet squat. I'm like, oh my God, who are you? <laughs> Bring back the woman who never exercised a, you know, a day in her life yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. And, you know, and now she's trying to get her girlfriends, you mm. know, to come into the, yeah. like, someone so needs this so badly. And I hope, I wish she would just kind of, you know, come in and see you. And it's because they're seeing the benefit. And that's what it is. It's like when you see it, when you start to actually physically see it and feel it, then it's like, I have to keep doing this. Yeah. And in the beginning, it's like, well, I'm going to give it a try. Um, I have a client who's been with me for two years who said to his son, fine, I'll start this. I'll hurt myself in two months <laughs> and then I can stop. <laughs> that was two years ago. Oh, wow. That's hilarious. He's still coming. Yeah. He's still coming. Why? Because mm. he hasn't hurt himself. I mean, yeah. you know, and he likes it. He says, you know, begrudgingly, I feel better when I do this. Yeah. I don't like missing. And my, and the, no one likes missing sessions. They hate missing their session mm. because that means that they're going to feel, they're going to feel stiff mm. or they're going to have to go back in the weight or, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, they joke around with, they don't, you know, that's okay. But in, but in their mind, they're like, I've worked so hard to, yeah. to reach this point. Why can't I get over? Like my mom keeps banging her head against the same weight when she's benching. It's like, why can't I get over this weight? Mm. And, you know, and she's so, so it's interesting to watch her kind of like get frustrated thinking, oh, wow, you're really into this now. Like yeah. you want to actually be able to do more. Like yeah. you don't like the fact that you keep, you know, you can't, you, this weight is heavy now, but it's because they keep showing up and eventually yeah. you keep showing up and you keep, you keep adding weight to a bar. It's going to, yeah. you know, it's, things are going to, things are going to get heavy, but it, it is a incredible, it's an incredible population. The and other thing I, it bypasses as well is that there's a level of nerdiness that comes with this which mm -hmm. isn't really me. And I don't think it's you either. I, I was, I ventured onto the forums um, yeah. a couple of weeks ago as I was looking for something very specific um, and I got a bit lost. And, and there's, there's a lot of this on the Academy forums as well. And it's, it's very blokey, physics-y kind of mm -hmm. nerdiness and they love it. And I just can't get on board with all of that. And this yeah. population aren't asking for any of that. No, <laughs> no, of no. Nerdy kind of questions and answers that I just would be really thrown no. by and not be no. able to answer and think well okay but actually I don't need that for this population and I don't no. need it for them to get the benefits that that I know they need I was yeah, I was no. telling them I meant to send you actually um one of the one of the rehabbers um sent an email to Mary saying oh ask Lynette if she's if she's listened to this podcast episode so there's a doctor here. he doesn't work as a doctor anymore he's now a medical journalist Michael Mosley he's He's very well known because he, he works for the BBC and mm -hmm. he's a bit crafty. He wrote a book about fasting and made an absolute fortune on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it really gets my goat because I right, think this right. is, you didn't invent this book. You can't write right, a book. Right. Um, so he's got this series on Radio 4 and it was, it's called Just One Thing. And each week he picks a topic where if you just do this one thing, it's mm -hmm. really good for your health. And this week was about weight training. Um, and I only listened to it because one of the rehabbers picked it up and, and it, you know, it wasn't anything I didn't know, but there was in, right. the, in the 15 minute podcast, he spoke to a researcher in Canada who has shown with her research that weight training improves your memory. And I thought that oh, was yeah. fascinating. And she said, yeah. it seems to be that because your body is growing because of the, mm -hmm. the you know, the stimulus for growth that weight training mm -hmm. provides Mm -hmm. It has a knock-on effect on improving your memory. Sure. And her research sure. has shown yeah. that. Um, so I fed this back to the rest of the rehabbers and they just absolutely loved it. They were like, great, just another reason to do it. And I thought being able to actually explain what it was about yes. the weight training that is going yes. to improve your memory convinced me, you know, as, as needing a bit more convincing. Um, yeah. It just bugged me that it was on his podcast because, oh, <laughs> <laughs> damn you. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, actually it made it. it made great sense and so I find that actually yeah. just just sharing little things like that with them they're really really grateful for it because yeah, yeah why wouldn't you want to protect your memory when you you know yes 60 plus or 45 <laughs> like it seems I don't know I don't know how it is um out, out near you with your in regards to like you know the uh, journalism or newspapers but it, every other week there's an article on strength training now and why it's important and why it's important for older people no, like, I, I wouldn't say that's put on, but knowing the trend, if you've got it there now, we'll probably have it by this time next year. It's, I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, New York Times, Washington Post, oh, Wall wow. Street Journal, this, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's always, and it's always typically the same kind of article, but it's more and more. And here, 
there was an art, there was an article that came out on CNN about the changes in the, in gyms and how mm-hmm. people are moving a more moving away from the cardio equipment right, and more into the weight room and gyms are seeing this trend and not, you know, pushing the kind of the cardio to the side and trying to grow their, their weight, their weight oh, okay. room. So you're right. seeing racks, you're seeing a lot more racks going into to gyms, like commercial gyms. Mm. Um, so there definitely is this trend that, they, well, hopefully, the, I mean, it's not, a, hopefully it's not a trend, but a shift mm. in thinking that you need only cardio for exercise or lose weight or whatever. And obviously, you know, nutrition is mm. more important than, mm. than exercises to make you feel better, to get you stronger. Um, but this definitely a shift towards like strength training, like actually building muscle, mm. <laughs> building stronger bones, mm. right. Um, is, is the, uh, is the number one, is oh, the number okay. one. Right. It's like, it, it is it, almost every other article, every, almost every other week, mm. there's an, there's an article. The Washington post had a recent article and I shared it on my Instagram page. Um, and there's a great quote in there that it says exercise. And I would say, mm. so I would I would say strength training is the best prescription for in de- maintaining independence. Okay. Right. And that is, that is, yeah. it, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, you, I say, I quote that now all the time. I'll, I'll talk to people. I'll yeah. say exercise. I said strength. I'll say, I'll switch out to say strength training is the best prescription for maintaining independence. Mm. We want to be able to be independent. I don't want to have to, and, and my older clients want to maintain their independence mm. Right. As Manny said, people, he, he was in Florida this week for uh, the holidays. Mm. He said, I hate Florida. <laughs> he said, people go to, people go to Florida to die. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's, his, that's his take on it. Right. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to die, you know, and, and, you know, and older and older clients, older clients do think about mm. death a lot more. Mm. Right. So if you, if you can give them, provide them an a, opportunity to feel like they're in, they feeling more independent, mm. And, you know, they're, and, and having, uh, and their life is still moving along and there's, the, you know, then why not? Yeah. Like any, any little bit will do any yeah. little bit will yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, that's a, I've, you know, I've definitely, I've never, I've never coached. I mean, over the years that I've been coaching, I've never talked, used strength training as a, as a eight week to bikini body or mm. this no. never, yeah. but over time definitely have pushed them more like this is about being independent. Mm. This is about being able to do for yourself. This is so that you can play with your grandchildren. This is so mm. that you can, you fall down and you can get back up. You don't break something. Not sexy, mm. but it's, but it's, it, this is life. This is your, this is your body. You get one, may like say, you get one body, treat mm. your body well. Mm. And this is how, we, mm. this is treating your body well. Yeah. And this is giving them yeah. that, that feeling of independence again. Yeah. And I've had to so. say, on many of the weeks, actually, and, and remind people that your body will respond to whatever you ask it to do. Absolutely. Um, and it's about the dosing. And if you ask it to sit in the car and sit in front of the TV, it will condition itself around that. That's right. Um, That's right. And, and yeah, and I think that kind of simplistic reminder, you know, does 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 go a long way to to keeping people um, mm-hmm. focused on it because you know they have all, all a number of wacky ideas. A lot, as I'm sure you're aware, people um, have all sorts of weird ideas about how frail they are and how how they might so oh, yeah. easily hurt themselves and I have to say I, I, I said this to a lady yeah. this week who was um she wouldn't pick the barbell up even I'd set up a very very light bar and, and I said oh do you want me to raise it a little bit more um I can get some more blocks out and and then you know the really mm-hmm. the range of motion will be reduced to the minimum and she went well right. oh I'm just not sure and I said what is it that you're worried about and she says my heart I went okay <gasps> okay um because she's, she's had heart surgery a long time ago yeah um, and I said but you're probably exerting more bursts of, of, of energy like this, doing stuff around the house, getting the vacuum out. And, and, um, and she went, mm, well, I've got a very light vacuum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But again, I really wanted to get into what, what is this about? Where is this coming from? Um, yeah. you know, I, I like that side of understanding yeah. what people's feelings yeah. about yeah. are and being able to kind of be that hand holding to some extent yeah. to get them going. Yeah. Um, 
so you know she said she'll come back and have a think about it again this week she says, i'm not going to give this up i'm not going to give this up but i think probably she'll need that's many, good. many more weeks yeah to kind of circle around it a few times <laughs> and, but yeah okay. that's no it, and it, it is i mean i usually it's the back right mm. i don't want to pick my back i'm yeah. afraid about my you know and yeah it's a bit, you know your back's not made of glass mm. you know i mean and that's i tell this to my young people like mm. your back's not made of glass your back will has to it has to work in order mm. for it to do anything or get and, and improve and get stronger mm. you have to be able to pick something up properly so I'll pull like a little light stool over, like mm-hmm. one of my little 12 inch stools, or I have a, I have a stool from um, like Target, it, you know, a little step stool. Mm-hmm. I'll say, well, how would you pick that up? You know, you have those things in your house, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, how, show me how you would pick it up. Mm-hmm. And then they show me, I said, well, that's all this is, except yeah. it's now a bar mm-hmm. with some plate, some, on this plate, it weighs five pounds. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, pl- I said, it's made of plastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's on a 10 pound bar. Yeah. So that stool and that bar probably weigh the same thing and you pick that up just fine. Mm. So this is, this is going to teach you how to keep something close to you. Mm. And the more you do it, then in your house, when you pick something up, you'll remember to get close to it. You'll mm. remember to keep it close to you. And, and all of a sudden it's like a light bulb goes off. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I do this all the time in my house. I said, exactly. Mm. Mm. This is just teaching you mm. like you said in the beginning that this movement pattern, mm. how to move yeah. better. Well, the strength is there. The strength is there. It's it's movement patterns that people have difficulty with. Yeah. And that's what leads to injury. That's what leads to people being in pain because they don't know how to move their bodies properly. Yeah. yeah. And that's why it's so important to teach them just simply how to squat, how mm. to sit down, mm. stand back up. Yeah. And not be scared of it, actually. Just And not know, be scared it, of it. Not be scared dosing. of it. You know, it, is, it really mm-hmm. is so much about the dosing and I and I I I end up using this analogy quite a lot I use Rebecca's pain being like a smoke alarm (laughs) most of the time the smoke alarm goes off there's no fire that really stuck with me I use that I use that in clinic quite a bit um but equally um you know when people are nervous about starting something or doing something it's just about the dosing you know how many how many people gardeners at the beginning of spring will spend the day in the garden and then they're back so sore that they can't walk for 10 uh-huh. days and I said well yeah you, uh-huh. you've deconditioned over the winter mm-hmm. and you went in at full maximum All out, dose full out. exactly exactly without any kind of w- work up to it and actually if you yep. just worked up to that and then somehow they they kind of go oh yeah that, that, they that, don't think about that, that. So much no sense and I think yeah so I, I use these I use more of the the, the coaching tips in a, in my clinic now than than probably I do most of the medical advice to be honest yeah but, um, yeah the, yeah it's well it's more relatable mm. yeah yeah it's way more it's more relatable to people yeah. that's that's why right yeah. and you're seeing and because you're coaching so much more and because strength training is such an important part of your life now mm. it is it just seeps right into yeah. yeah to you know to what you do and and you can see the parallels mm. you know I mean I as a dancer, I was, you know, in the beginning when I was, you know, coaching and learning and still learning how to coach, how to coach. I remember being very nervous still. And Diego said, why are you so nervous about teaching this to people? He said, you're a dancer. You've been teaching people how to move. Mm. You're, you were 18 years old. And when I stop and I think about it, I'm like, yeah, you're right. And it is just the parallels between Mm. teaching someone how to squat, teaching someone how to deadlift and teaching someone how to do a plie or, 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 or to do a uh, port de bras mm. and have to like reach and do a hit. I mean, I, it's true. It's, it's there all mm. the movement pattern that I've done my whole entire life. I'm just now putting a weight in people's hands and it's not dance, but it's still, the mechanics are still there mm. externally rotating in your, you know, your femur so that you can put mm. point your knees out and get, and get down to a squat. Mm. I, I use dance analogies constantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, and I, and I stopped, I thought about it. I was like, you're right. I have been. It's it, this is teaching people how to move, mm. and then they get stronger because they add a little bit more resistance mm. to their, mm. you know, to the to themselves each time they come in. Mm. But the movement pattern has to be there first. That's like yeah. you talk about, like technique. I say technique, but it's move. It's moving better. Yeah, yeah, and and, and actually those 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 finer points, you know, for for, for what I'm doing right now, actually, it's it, right. It, it, it doesn't anywhere near. Have, have as much importance as I thought it did and, and right, I guess it's right. that thing of you oh I, I guess I knew it all along you just have to get on and do it and actually um and, and a lot of the things I was look, I was watching this guy one of my guys in the third group in a minute who has got the longest legs I'm not kidding his legs have come up to my clavicle I've, I've <laughs> long legs. and and watching him deadlift and just how different it looks in somebody with mm-hmm. such long yes. legs. and I think actually 
so much of the theory that I've been kind of learning about in the last few years is now coming to life and you go, ah, yeah. it takes it yeah. first, you need to see these extreme examples yeah. of somebody yes. Yes. either with really long legs or really short legs and, and, and mm-hmm. then actually you can relate that out. So I think I, mm-hmm. I probably was missing this, this kind of, you know, right, get on and do it. Um, but it, it, it feels, it feels now the time to kind of lean into this a little bit more and it's great. lean away from general practice which is I think I think it's interesting I was saying to my friend the other day there's increasingly doing a clear I don't do a lot of of GP work now at the minute I've scaled it right back maybe a couple of mornings a week and I've picked up other roles along the way to make up the money but there's something about doing less of it that when I do do it now I just feel like you know a sponge for everybody whinging um it's not really practicing medicine it's just outpouring Mm -hmm. of whether whether they're whinging about the state of the health service or whinging about this hurts and that hurts and you know and I'm out Mm -hmm. of shape and I'm out of breath and I'm saying and and actually working with a population who've already made a decision to improve themselves um just cuts away all of that and that's not to say that people aren't a bit nervous and need a bit of of, of, explanation but they've they've already self-selected to to improve themselves and I think yeah that's where the fulfillment is actually rather mm-hmm. than trying to convince somebody convincing no. never works does it anyway no. you really no. convince anybody of anything um in fact they were they were talking about this on the on a on this week's starting strength podcast somebody sent in a Q&A about their mum um yeah and and Rip was saying don't try and convince her if you have to convince no. her it's not going to work and I thought yeah exactly truth to that actually it's it's people have got to it's so true to self-select haven't they and, and I think so I think I think that definitely definitely helps Mm -hmm. so yeah so actually that's that's really useful you've given me some great ideas about how to keep the class going um and reassured me that actually there will be people that just want to keep going in the class yes and that that's better than than stopping the class because I was thinking well you know if they're going to run out does it need to come to an end but you're right no it doesn't necessarily need to come to an end does it so keeping that ticking over will still have a lot of value for people who would otherwise not necessarily do anything um, right but but it's it's putting in some provision to be able to siphon off those people that you know wanted to yeah. take it a little bit further and yeah and if 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 um um if you wanted to mix things up you know and they've been pressing but you want to do maybe some benching but you don't have a bench you know mm. you know you can do you can certainly they can lie on the floor mm. with with that bar or with dumbbells and you can just have them do a floor press like teaching them how you know so that they're working you know their chest a little bit a little bit you know okay, more. I haven't thought um, of that so, because, yeah they won't do press ups because oh, that's far too much and I thought okay stiff shoulders elbows and that kind of thing but I haven't thought about actually getting them lying down and most of them actually are okay about getting on and off the floor because the other thing I've been I've been spinning over my mind is do we put on falls training but actually mm-hmm. for this for the these that have all elected to do some strength training they would they they can get up and down off the floor it, it, yeah yeah so if they can if they can if they can move easily up and down then lying lying down either either doing like a two you know two arm dumbbell press mm-hmm. or just even a floor press mm-hmm. like, like a single a single arm press it can mm-hmm. be neutral i mean there are lots of ways to kind of take the class and rotate through mm. you know that the pressing exercises so mm. maybe it's one week it's pressed the next week it's bench the next mm. week it's you know so you can start to do that um and um you know stick with the squatting mm. and make and try to encourage people to go a little bit lower if they mm. can or mm. add weight but I don't think there's you know if they're enjoying themselves and they're coming and you're able to keep working with them mm. and hone your coaching skills that's yeah. what matters yeah yeah, yeah, that's what matters. You know, you'll get you'll get better and better at 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 giving them, of cueing them, or coaching them. And if new people are starting, mm. and then those who want to do more, figuring out how to then, mm. you know, bring them in on another time, mm. another time mm. to to work with them in that capacity. But mm. okay, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, we can get a grant and get things get things moving. It's I think awesome. It's, um, yes, you know, it doesn't need to be imminent, but I think it's it's like we will yeah. pick something up in in the next. Few that's great. Stuff and get it going. That's great. Before you go, if you wouldn't mind, basically just because I want I want people yeah. to to understand how how we well I mean I can even I can even say how we met in my in my own introduction, mm-hmm. but just where you know why we were having mm-hmm. why you were contacting me like but and but also give people mm-hmm. a background as to where you were and where you are now and why the why, yeah. you know why yeah, yeah. why we were even talking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
okay and, and I do this with with the rehabbers to be honest because they're curious as to well you know how on earth did you arrive at, at, at this position and I often tend to say well yep um, I had my own introduction to strength training when initially like many people I wanted to lose a little bit of weight and discovered Mike Matthews and his Thinner, leaner, stronger book, which is, you know, Amazon very much pushed my way, um, which introduced me to heavy compound lifting and stopped me floating about in the gym and gave me a program to do. That was at the beginning of 20 or the beginning of 2015. Uh And um, as I felt the improvements from that and, and following his podcast and opening my eyes to the world of weight training for women and the benefits that it can um, that it can provide. Um, I then discovered starting strength and liked the simplicity of the program and found it very easy to follow, very logical. And that appealed to me in, in terms of getting it done and getting on with the day. And as I progressed through the, the starting strength linear progression by myself, working from the book, looking at videos, um, I thought I wanted more. And I wanted to get more and more out of it. And I also started to see in my clinical practice how this simple method could actually do quite a lot for a lot of people. Um, hit a bit of an injury, nothing major, but couldn't really work my way through it um, and decided to treat myself to a coach when that became available, which is how I met you, Emily. And basically, we went through a linear, linear pro- progression together and you introduced me to what you do and the setting in which you provide this. And all it did was feed my recognition that that more and more people need access to this because there's not really anybody that it doesn't work for, right. whatever your starting point is. Um, and aside from telling people about it and directing them to podcasts or YouTube videos, um, I kept thinking I haven't got any way that I can get people into this unless I start offering it myself. Mm-hmm. And I guess also also wanting people to experience what I've got from it. You know, when when you discover something that's actually, you know, without meaning to sound dramatic, life changing, right. you want other people to have a piece of that. Um, and that's really where it's come from. And I've never lost that kind of um, wish to bring these two spaces together. As I was explaining to to some family last weekend, there is an enormous space between what the medical profession do and the fitness industry and actually these two worlds really ought to align much more closely because many people are coming to a doctor with something that actually would be sorted if they even if they just got a bit fitter and 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 a little bit Mm -hmm. a little bit stronger um but they don't know that or they're frightened of what's going to happen if they start exercising and they're led to believe that they're very delicate um and and i think this method gives people a framework to um to, to get around that and 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 discover what their bodies can do and and I, it certainly worked for me and it's worked for everybody that I've introduced to it um and and I just feel now that I almost want to leave the medical world behind to carry on dishing out its uh-huh. prescriptions uh-huh. um and and actually deliver what I see as, as probably the most powerful medicine or one of the most powerful medicines I think sleeping well can can complement right. it quite well as well um, and sorting stress levels out but I think this method has has a scope to do that as well um, so so that that's how I came to it and then it's just a case of developing confidence and having access to people right. who trust you enough to to let you right. guide them through it which is which is where I'm at at the moment right. with it really and being um, a, I think being a GP um, definitely has gives you a little edge it gives you a big edge because people are kind of like it affords me trust oh doctor yeah I trust doctors, right? Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, you know, we, I, I know I talk about this all the time, you know, about in the mm. gym, you know, doctors told me not to do this, doctors told me not to do that. And it's like, not all doctors are the same, but it's, mm. you know, and and that's, that's a whole other, you know, thing in itself. But yeah. you, as someone who started off as, you know, in, in the medical profession and then discovered this on your own and realized the benefits of it and mm. did your research and educated mm-hmm. yourself more. Um, mm-hmm. And here you are today, you know, working with, um, you know, with individuals and still trying to, mm-hmm. and trying to kind of mm-hmm. move that forward in even, even more. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, but that's what it takes. It's going to take somebody who actually takes an interest in it and then mm-hmm. decides to educate 
him, his, or her, you know, himself or herself more. On the yeah, and, and I often have to remind people that because they'll often say, "Oh, were you always sporty?" No, not at no. all. Um, I was not a sporty person at school. Um, I, you know, floated in and out of gyms like many people at the start of the year when I needed to lose weight and that kind of thing. And, and I think people make these assumptions then that I was probably the fit person. Um, and and that that wasn't me at all. I think I probably discovered this just at the right time. Right you know, mid thirties and, you know, not that it's ever too late. I genuinely believe, I don't believe it's ever too no. late, but I think it, it, at a time when, you know, I was raising young kids, they're now teenagers, but, um, but that's the other thing is that it's, it's finding something that fits around all those other demands. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, this, this program just, just does that. Right. And so it's a great example of, you don't need to be a complete fitness addict no. um, to get to get results. You just have to find a space to to make it consistent. And I think that they're the things that I come back to people. And um, and and I think there's there's an authenticity to being able to genuinely say, no, I'm not someone who's just always always been a fitness fanatic. Actually, I've made this work into my life, and it, it's now part of what I do. Right. And much like you, I'll be doing this. I'll be doing this till I go to my grave. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hopefully, <laughs> the, the day before. <laughs> um, and and I and I, th- I guess because that that's genuine, I, yeah. I think people probably recognize yep. it. So that is yeah, maybe that's why absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And um, tell tell people your um your uh, biz, I guess a uh, business name like your you know they could oh you, pres- well prescription pres- strength yeah. I, I, yeah I wrestled with this for quite a long time and loved the loved Solly's book the barbell prescription but um but obviously <laughs> we couldn't steal it <laughs> but it, it's really actually and I talked it over at length with a good friend of mine and she kept saying it really is about the strength you you can't have prescription fitness and and and, and anyway it kind of I wanted something that that it is a prescription mm-hmm. it is it's the best prescription you can ever write for somebody mm-hmm. and I do think of it like yes that. you know if I'm starting somebody on a new medication we don't go straight in at full dose right. we, we work out the dosing right. that's appropriate for where right. you're starting and I think that a prescription for strength, a prescription for it's, exercise. It's, it's great. Know, it's exactly the same. Exactly. Um, yeah. D- so no, Diego loves it. Them. Diego loves it. He's mm. like, see, that's that's a brilliant <laughs> name. He said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's becoming a thing. It, it's finally getting off the page. I registered the domain. It's excellent. Done anything with it? Um, but you know, it's on a few t-shirts. Yes. And and, um, and hopefully, you know, by the end of the year, it will be be a working corner of a really great little setting that's in itself is, is quite unique it is um there's nowhere like the the studio that i'm working that's from awesome. that, that i'm aware of it's a great little place so you know we'll see. it's great it's gone very dark while i've been sitting here well it's it's <laughs> evening your way and you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. i actually let you go so um keep me so keep me posted keep loop. please please mm-hmm. let me know how how it works out let me know about the equipment about the grant and yeah. um see 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 what happens if you incorporate yeah. you know a couple of extra things into the uh into the circuit yeah. um and if you have if you can video if you are allowed to video them um i would love to see it yeah they're very relaxed about that the problem is I'm, my head's all over the place keeping an eye yeah. on them that then the sessions you need, to, just, you need to set like a phone up somewhere and just you know yeah. shoot the yeah. shoot the squatters one day shoot the pressers one day shoot the deadlifters yeah. one day yeah yeah, yeah, no, I will. I definitely, and certainly when um when we get our corner fitted out, yeah. definitely I'll I'll do an intro video. We've been talking about a YouTube channel as well. Just that's, that's something awesome. I've got in the back of my mind about actually just, just getting some kind of solid, yep. health sensible, no bullshit, healthy kind of advice yeah. out there yeah. for, for people. Um, you know, I think not. I don't want any degree of notoriety or, or fame with it that's the only thing I don't, I don't I'm a bit wary about I don't have any my YouTube channel is definitely on the value. on the on the it's on it's really like under oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many I think I may I may have 200 subscribers but and that's fine with me I, I stay under the radar yeah. as much as I need yeah. you know I get out there I put my I put myself out there just enough mm. yeah to keep the business right exactly out, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not seeking fame absolutely not. no definitely not. no Awesome. Awesome. All right. Great to catch up, Emily. I'll keep you posted. Great, Lynette. Next time there's a development. Fingers crossed it won't be too long. But I appreciate you. You're your welcome. Time. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to 5 by 3 Radio with Emily and Rebecca. If you like our show and want to know more about 5 by 3 training, please visit us at www.5, that's F I V E, the letter X, the number 3.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. To learn more about Rebecca, 
please visit her website, cornerstonestrengthmaryland.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.